Get ready to embark on a hilarious and captivating journey through the legendary tales of Sakai Tadatsugu, the renowned general known as one of the four heavenly kings of the Tokugawa, or the 16 divine generals of the Tokugawa in the Sengoku period. Sakai Tadatsugu served as a loyal retainer to his lord, Tokugawa Ieyasu. Now, let's take a step back to Ieyasu's childhood when he was held hostage by the Imagawa clan. When Oda Nobuhide planned a massive attack on Okazaki, it was Sakai Tadatsugu's father, Matsudera Hirotada, who requested reinforcements from Imagawa Yoshimoto, due to his daughter Chiku's connection to the Imagawa clan. This was the reason behind the mobilization of forces. As history unfolds, Tokugawa Ieyasu emerges victorious in the decisive Battle of Sekigahara, becoming the ruler of Japan. However, his early life was filled with hardships and challenges. It is said that his mother divorced and left him, and at the tender age of six, he became a hostage of the Oda clan, followed by a stay with the Imagawa clan at the age of eight. During these turbulent times, his father was tragically assassinated by his retainers. Amidst these tribulations, a person who stood by the young Tadachiro and protected him was none other than Sakai Tadatsugu. Shizuoka, where Ieyasu was held hostage, thrived as a bustling city under the rule of Imagawa Yoshimoto and was even called one of the three great cultural cities of the Warring States, due to its prosperity and influence. Imagine the extraordinary hardships faced by Sakai Tadatsugu, who remained by the side of Tokugawa Ieyasu, growing up as a hostage under the dominance of the Imagawa clan. Undeterred by such challenges, Sakai Tadatsugu faithfully served his lord. Apart from Sakai Tadatsugu, the other three heavenly kings of the Tokugawa were illustrious warriors like, Honda Tadakatsu, Sakakabara Yasumasa, and, I Naomasa. Their feats were awe-inspiring, earning envy even from the likes of, Tayatomi Hideyoshi. Among them, Sakai Tadatsugu played a pivotal role, teaching Tokugawa Ieyasu the art of war and strategic command. Prepare to be amused and entertained as we delve deeper into the exhilarating tales of valor, loyalty, and the whimsical exploits of Sakai Tadatsugu and his fellow warriors in the Tokugawa clan. Born in 1527, Sakai Tadatsugu was the second son of Sakai Tadayasu, a loyal retainer of the Matsudera clan, which would later evolve into the mighty Tokugawa clan. As he grew older and reached adulthood, he followed in his father's footsteps and became a devoted vassal of Matsudera Hirotada. Little did he know that this would eventually lead him to dedicate his entire life to the service of Tokugawa Ieyasu. In the tumultuous era of the Warring States, where treachery and scheming were the norm, Sakai Tadatsugu proved himself to be a paragon of unwavering loyalty. Rising to the esteemed position of the Tokugawa clan's chief retainer after the fateful Battle of Akehazama in 1560, he remained steadfastly faithful to the illustrious Tokugawa Ieyasu. Never once contemplating betrayal. Join us as we journey through the comical and captivating exploits of Sakai Tadatsugu. A true embodiment of loyalty in an era filled with cunning plots and shifting alliances. 
From his humble beginnings in Anada Castle to his unwavering devotion to the Tokugawa clan. This is a tale that will keep you entertained and laughing throughout. When you think of Sengoku warlords or the Tokugawa Four Heavenly Kings, an image of solemn dignity comes to mind. However, Sakai Tadatsugu had a rather peculiar episode where he captivated the atmosphere of a drinking party with his unique skill in Ebi Sukui. Though the exact nature of Sakai Tadatsugu's Ebi Sukui performance remains shrouded in mystery, it is speculated to have been something akin to the modern day activity of Doju Sukui at festivals. Not only was he a formidable warrior on the battlefield, but Sakai Tadatsugu possessed a versatile talent that could enliven any feast, earning him the trust and admiration of his lord and the affection of his subordinates. This unexpected and mischievous side of Sakai Tadatsugu, the loyal warrior who dedicated his life to Tokugawa Ieyasu, adds a delightful twist to his character. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the tale of Sakai Tadatsugu, the warrior with a knack for shrimp scooping, whose vibrant presence lit up even the most solemn of drinking parties. Before the alliance between the Tokugawa and Oda clans, Fukutani Castle, nestled in Makawa, stood as the border between the territories of the Imagawa and Oda clans. During the reign of Imagawa Yoshimoto, Makawa and Awari fiercely clashed, and in the spring of 1556, the forces of the Oda clan besieged Fukutani Castle. Leading the enemy troops was none other than Shibata Katsui. With a mere 2,000 cavalry, Sakai Tadatsugu faced the attack on Fukutani Castle. Venturing outside its walls to engage in a battle of epic proportions. After a fierce struggle, he emerged as the victor. Shibata Katsui, injured and defeated, fled from the battlefield. Making this clash Sakai Tadatsugu's debut fight. Sakai Tadatsugu was highly skilled in martial arts, and he personally led the charge outside the castle walls. Unfortunately, due to the subsequent alliance between the Tokugawa and Oda clans, little documentation remains about this remarkable achievement. In subsequent battles, Sakai Tadatsugu often found himself leading the vanguard, entrusted with the frontline fortresses by Imagawa Yoshimoto himself. He was a courageous and highly skilled warrior, who was held in great esteem and expectation by his lord. So, brace yourself for the tale of Sakai Tadatsugu, the daring and talented warrior whose victory over Shibata Katsui at Fukutani Castle became the stuff of legends, with just the right touch of hilarity thrown in. Get ready for an uproarious tale of Sakai Tadatsugu's heroic exploits at the Battle of Nagashino. The Battle of Nagashino is renowned for Oda Nobunaga's triumph leading a formidable core of arquebusers. But let me tell you, Sakai Tadatsugu stole the show with his incredible feats and saved the besieged Nagashino castle from certain doom. As a valiant warrior fighting on the Oda side, Tadatsugu devised a cunning plan to launch a surprise attack from behind on none other than Takeda Katsuyori. The overall commander of the Takeda forces and a seasoned warlord. Behind Katsuyori's camp lay the treacherous Mount Tobagasu, making the element of surprise even more challenging to achieve. You see, 
Katsuyori had formidable retainers like Baba Nobuharu, Naito Masatoyo, and Yamagata Masakage, battle-hardened warriors who had served the Takeda clan since the days of Katsuyori's father. Takeda Shingen. These were truly skilled and experienced generals. However, amidst such a formidable lineup, Sakai Tadatsugu boldly approached Oda Nobunaga himself, suggesting, Allow me to launch a surprise attack from behind. Despite initial skepticism due to the presence of Mount Tobagasu's fortress, Tadatsugu's persistence paid off, and he successfully took it by storm. Thanks to Sakai Tadatsugu's audacious actions, the besieged Nagashino castle was saved. Not only did he execute a daring assault from the Tobagasu fortress, but he also vanquished notable figures like Katsuyori's uncle, Kawakubo Nobazane. Moreover, defeating the mighty Takeda clan, which boasted numerous formidable warlords. At the Battle of Nagashino held significant implications for future conflicts. In fact, the Takeda clan's decline following their defeat in this battle is a testament to the pivotal role played by Tadatsugu's surprise attack, shaping the course of history. Oda Nobunaga himself acknowledged Tadatsugu's invaluable contributions, leaving the words, he seems to have eyes on his back, a testament to his exceptional military prowess and strength. Sakai Tadatsugu was a renowned general, acknowledged even by the great Oda Nobunaga. Following the Battle of Nagashino, Tadatsugu continued to achieve remarkable feats. Such as his involvement in the battles of Kamaka and Nagakut, the Battle of Hachigata, and ultimately avenging the treacherous incident at Hanaji by slaying Akechi Mitsuhide. His contributions were nothing short of extraordinary. Hold on tight for the uproarious tale of Sakai's drum. When it comes to Sakai Tadatsugu, one cannot overlook the famous episode of his thunderous drumming. This legend unfolds during the Battle of Makatagahara when Tokugawa Ieyasu suffered a defeat and retreated to Hamamatu Castle. It is said that Tadatsugu, standing atop the castle's watchtower, unleashed a resounding beat on his drum, lifting the spirits of his allies. Now, when your leader is in full retreat, it's only natural for morale to plummet on your side. Tadatsugu's audacious action in the midst of the battle was a cause for concern. However, he had a brilliant plan up his sleeve. While boosting the morale of his comrades, he cleverly camouflaged the sound of the drum as if it were a signal for a hidden ambush against the enemy Takeda forces. The moment the Takeda army heard the drumming, they turned back. And the Tokugawa forces miraculously escaped the jaws of death. Tadatsugu's thunderous drumming had worked wonders. Now, there are various interpretations of this episode and some argue that it may not be entirely factual. Nevertheless, it stands as a widely known anecdote that epitomizes the legendary Sakai Tadatsugu. Gather, round and brace yourselves for the uproarious tale of the 1579 incident, the Harakiri of Matsudera Nobuyasu. Sakai Tadatsugu, renowned for his military exploits, had aged into the role of a senior retainer in the Tokugawa clan. He found himself entangled in a web of complex relationships among numerous vassals. 
assuming a prominent position as a respected elder. While Tadatsugu excelled in this role, there was one incident that proved to be beyond his solving abilities. The infamous, Harakiri incident of Matsudera Nobuyasu in 1579. This event, considered the greatest taboo within the Tokugawa clan, vexed Tadatsugu to no end. The central figure in this tale is Matsudera Nobuyasu, the eldest son of Tokugawa Ieyasu. At a mere nine years old, he married Tokuhime, the daughter of Oda Nobunaga, and became the lord of Okazaki Castle at a tender age. This marriage symbolized a political alliance between the Oda and Tokugawa clans a crucial necessity for the Tokugawa family, who were still minor daimyo seeking to protect their domain. As Matsudera Nobuyasu matured, he achieved numerous military accomplishments, participating in his first battle at the age of 14 and earning renown in the Battle of Nagashino and others. Growing into a valiant and intrepid warrior, it seemed that Matsudera Nobuyasu's life was sailing smoothly. However, tragically, it abruptly came to an end at the mere age of 20. In the form of ritual suicide, the dark clouds over Matsudera Nobuyasu's circumstances began to surface in 1579. His father, Tokugawa Ieyasu, suddenly appeared at Okazaki Castle and banished Matsudera Nobuyasu from his own domain. This act of casting aside his son, who had proudly earned numerous military accolades, escalated to the point of ordering him to perform harakiri. Unfortunately, detailed records about the sequence of events leading to this outcome are scarce as it is believed that the Tokugawa clan, considering it their greatest taboo, had no desire to preserve the memory of this incident. According to one theory, the conflict originated from a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law issue. Despite the strained relationship between Tokuheim, Matsudera Nobuyasu's legal wife, and her mother-in-law, Sukiyama Dono. It is said that Matsudera Nobuyasu never sided with his wife. Tokuheim had endured years of snide remarks from her mother in law, and her discontent ultimately found its way into a letter addressed to her father, Oda Nobunaga. Upon learning the harsh reality that his beloved daughter had not been treated with the utmost care, Oda Nobunaga was incensed. Matsudera Nobuyasu, as his son-in-law, had managed to incur the wrath of Oda Nobunaga himself. If this were the present day, a divorce might have resolved the matter, but such matters were not as easily remedied in times of chaos. Matsudera Nobuyasu found himself caught in a world where the person he had offended was none other than his father-in-law, Oda Nobunaga. In such a world, the outcome could only be Harakiri. An inescapable fate, considering the marriage of Matsudera Nobuyasu and Tokuheim as a symbol of the alliance between their families, this was an unpardonable offense. The turmoil caused by this incident was not merely an outsider's affair, it greatly affected Sakai Tadatsugu, who served as a senior retainer in the Tokugawa clan. Together with Tokugawa Ieyasu's vassal, Ogubo Tadayo, Sakai Tadatsugu was tasked with resolving this incident as an envoy, racing tirelessly between the parties involved. However, their efforts proved futile, as Tokugawa Ieyasu ultimately ordered his eldest son to perform harakiri. 
It is worth noting that another theory suggests it was Oda Nobunaga who commanded Matsudera Nobuyasu's ritual suicide. Regardless of who issued the order, the fact that Matsudera Nobuyasu's severed head was initially sent to Oda Nobunaga confirms the presence of Nobunaga's intentions. The aftermath of this incident left a bitter taste for Sakai Tadatsugu. Following this event, the relationship between Tokugawa Ieyasu and Sakai Tadatsugu deteriorated. Tokugawa Ieyasu believed that if his trusted senior retainer, Sakai Tadatsugu, had been more steadfast, he could have prevented the harakiri. This was an unfortunate turn of events for Sakai Tadatsugu, who had dedicated himself to protecting Tokugawa Ieyasu since his early years. In an era of chaos, not only was Matsudera Nobuyasu a prominent figure as a capable military commander, but he also symbolized the alliance between the Tokugawa and Oda clans as a husband. It was only natural that he held immense importance to Tokugawa Ieyasu. Unfortunately, Sakai Tadatsugu bore the brunt of his lord's anger a stroke of misfortune he could not escape. Despite enduring a scandalous incident that could be considered a stain on the Tokugawa clan, Sakai Tadatsugu remained steadfast in his service to the family. After his retirement, his son, Sakai Ayatsugu, inherited the family's position, and to their delight, the Tokugawa bestowed upon them a territory of around 30,000 koku. However, while other members of the Tokugawa Four Heavenly Kings, such as E. Naomasa, Honda Tadakatsu, and Sakakabara Yasumasa, were granted territories of around 100,000 koku. The discrepancy was starkly apparent. This treatment left Sakai Tadatsugu feeling quite dissatisfied, and it is said that he approached Tokugawa Ieyasu directly, pleading for an increase in his son's territory. Considering the past merits and services rendered to the Tokugawa family, it was not unreasonable for Sakai Tadatsugu to perceive this treatment as unfair. In response, Tokugawa Ieyasu snidely remarked, Do you even find your own son to be precious? This biting remark stemmed from the fact that Sakai Tadatsugu had served as a messenger during the incident of Seppuku, where Tokugawa Ieyasu's eldest son, Tokugawa Nobuyasu, met his tragic end. It was a situation where Sakai Tadatsugu, having fulfilled his duty, found himself in an inescapable predicament. In other words, it was a taunt from Tokugawa Ieyasu, who had lost his own son. Various theories exist regarding the relationship between Sakai Tadatsugu and Tokugawa Ieyasu in their later years. But many believe that this episode indicates a less than amicable connection. At the very least, Tokugawa Ieyasu held Sakai Tadatsugu responsible for the seppuku incident involving Tokugawa Nobuyasu and found the outcome unsatisfactory. It was a grudge that lingered. On the flip side, one can understand that Sakai Tadatsugu, who had protected Tokugawa Ieyasu since his early years, held expectations and trust that he would somehow resolve the seppuku incident. However, when those expectations were not met, their relationship deteriorated to the point where snide remarks were exchanged. In the annals of history, 
This peculiar exchange between Sakai Tadatsugu and Tokugawa Ieyasu stands as a testament to the whimsical nature of human relationships, even amidst the backdrop of samurai honor and duty. Once upon a time, in the aftermath of the Battle of Nagashino, the mighty Takeda clan met its demise. However, the majority of the surviving Takeda retainers found themselves serving under the banner of E. Naomasa. Meanwhile, one of the loyal retainers of the Tokugawa clan, Sakakabara Yasumasa, found himself in a rather precarious position with hardly any subordinates. Naturally, this led to some serious dissatisfaction on his part. In the tumultuous era of the Warring States, harboring discontent towards one's superiors, or, Lord, was not only a personal grievance but also a major cause for concern when it came to future battles. It fell upon the seasoned veteran, Sakai Tadatsugu, to play the role of a mediator and resolve this tension. Sakai Tadatsugu took it upon himself to scold both E. Naomasa and Sakakabara Yasumasa, offering guidance and acting as a lubricant of sorts to smooth their relationship. And lo and behold, his efforts bore fruit. E. Naomasa and Sakakabara Yasumasa managed to reconcile their differences to the point of becoming the best of buddies. Picture it. The charismatic Sakai Tadatsugu, donning his armor, wagging his finger at the bickering duo, and with a mix of sternness and wit, he managed to bring them together. It was like watching a hilarious comedy unfold amidst the chaos of war. Through laughter and camaraderie, the once estranged E. Naomasa and Sakakabara Yasumasa formed an unbreakable bond, akin to the tightest of bro friendships. Sakai Tadatsugu, the mastermind behind their newfound camaraderie, emerged as the unsung hero weaving friendship amidst the tumultuous tides of war. And so, in this amusing tale, we witness the power of a skilled mediator and the absurdity of samurai diplomacy, proving that sometimes all it takes is a good scolding and a few witty words to turn sworn enemies into the best of pals. On October 28, 1596, amidst the grandeur of Kyoto's Sakurai residence, a legendary figure breathed his last. Sakai Tadatsugu, the master of wit and wisdom, bid farewell to the world at the ripe age of 70. As the curtains closed on his eventful life, the echoes of his laughter and the tales of his exploits reverberated through the halls of history. From the battlefields where he brandished his sword to the diplomatic intrigues where he worked his magic, Sakai Tadatsugu left an indelible mark on Japan's tumultuous past. With a mischievous glint in his eye and a quick quip ever at the ready, Sakai Tadatsugu entertained emperors and samurai alike, regaling them with his anecdotes and sage advice. His wit was as sharp as the blade he wielded, cutting through the monotony of courtly affairs and bringing a smile to even the sternest faces. But as all great stories must come to an end, so did the tale of Sakai Tadatsugu. His final moments were spent surrounded by the whispers of cherry blossoms, their delicate petals falling gently to the ground as if bidding him farewell. The world mourned the loss of a brilliant mind and a true master of levity. Yet, though he may have left this mortal realm, Sakai Tadatsugu's legacy lived on. 
His wit and wisdom continued to inspire generations to come, reminding them that laughter could be found even in the face of adversity. And so, as the years passed, his name became synonymous with mirth and his memory a cherished treasure. On that fateful day in 1596, as the sun set over Kyoto, the world lost a jester, a warrior, and a mentor. But his spirit, forever enshrined in the annals of history, continued to sparkle in the hearts of those who reveled in his tales and delighted in his jests. Sakai Tadatsugu, the eternal entertainer, left a legacy that would endure long after his final curtain call.